Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to Sneaker Stories as always. I'm your host Chris Jack. Today we are checking out something incredibly exciting from Nike. It's a shoe that did not release here in South Africa. It's the Hirachi Adapt and it's Nike's sort of pinnacle of performance innovation or technological innovation in terms of self-lacing sneakers. This time it is in the lifestyle version of the Hirachi Adapt. So without further ado, let's check them out. Right, so as I mentioned, this shoe did not release here in South Africa. I'm not really sure why it didn't make its way to the shores. Uh, it's kind of the second or third generation uh, of this particular technology, uh, which creates self-lacing sneakers. Obviously, the major one uh, being the Nike Mag, um, which you know is just probably the grail of majority of people that are into sneakers. Uh, and they incorporated that technology in 2016, uh, and soon after that, put it into a shoe that was available to at least a bigger majority of people, uh, which was called the Nike Hyper Adapt. Now I have reviewed that shoe over on Sneaker Stories Instagram, uh, in the stories at least, and it's saved to the story highlights. If you do want to go and watch that, it was before we moved over to YouTube. So there's also about 200 other reviews uh, on the story highlights there. So if you have some time to kill, feel free to go over to sneakerstories.tv and scroll through the story highlights and see what we did at least before coming over to YouTube. But back to the shoe itself, this is actually a friend of mine's pair. Uh, it is a little bit too small for me, so that's why I'm unfortunately not doing an on-foot review of this. So now onto the shoe itself. As I mentioned, we've seen previous iterations of this particular technology, which have come out at really expensive prices, you know, sort of $700, which is well over 10,000 Rand here uh, locally in South Africa. Uh, and then they've basically crafted that technology. They've made it a little bit more better, a little bit more performance oriented with the release of the basketball dap shoes uh, which were I think around seven or eight months ago last year in 2019. Now those were great, but they were quite chunky on foot and they were more performance orientated for on-court use. However, now they've incorporated that technology into a more lifestyle based shoe and the base of the shoe is the Hirachi model, which was originally released in 1991. For me, I don't really think it looks too much like a Hirachi, like there obviously are some design touch points from that, but just for me, it's kind of like a whole entire new shoe. Uh, but maybe that's just the way I see it. But onto the shoe itself, they've packed a whole bunch of new technology and really brought this technology to life in terms of the way that we kind of do things uh, in today's 2020 age. Uh, and I guess maybe just to show you the box first, um, because this will kind of explain the technology that's included with the box. Uh, it is an incredibly cool box. You do have some awesome multicolor foiling done in the Nike logo. It's quite a big and quite a heavy box. Uh, and when you open that up, you do have the shoes which are wrapped in this beautiful foiling over here, which is obviously this iridescent kind of multicolor thing. And then at the top of the box, they have included the power cord over here. So if you just open that, you'll see the USB charging uh, and then just a basic power source plug over there. Now, one of the best innovations I've seen, at least with this technology, is the move away from having a cord that you had to plug into the shoes, or at least with the hyper adapts, they had a magnetic puck which would join underneath the shoe. So it was a little bit of a mission to kind of charge these kicks up all the time. So what's really, really nice to see is that they have included this awesome wireless charging pad over here, which is branded with Nike on it. Uh, and basically you just plug this into a power source and you can put the shoes directly on top of that and they will charge in, I believe, 30 minutes. And the battery charge on the shoes will be around two weeks or 14 days as far as Nike has said. I mean, this for me is probably enough reason to buy the shoes. I just think it's so cool and so different to be able to like get a wireless charging pad or station or whatever you want to call it with a pair of kicks. I mean, just so future. But with the hardware out of the way, the real exciting part comes in in terms of the Nike Adapt app. Now this is an app that's available to both iOS and Android users. However, as far as I've seen online in terms of other reviews of this particular pair, the Apple experience is definitely the best for this. Uh, and I'll tell you why now. So with the particular pairs of shoes, and maybe I'll just throw one up here for you quickly. You do have these two buttons on the side of the shoe, which will basically expand and contract the fit adapt and the power laces, I think is what they're calling them, to basically just constrict the shoe onto your foot. So there we are. Oh, and if you wanna go tighter, it's just, it's like a convertible car. How sick is that? 
Now, although that would be the manual way to do it on the shoe, and that's obviously on both of these, the app is where it really comes to life. So you can basically have personalized modes on the app and you can customize each shoe. So if your one foot's bigger than the other, you can basically customize the tension down of those power laces uh, on your foot. So you've got the perfect fit for either one of your feet. Then you can also have different settings, which allow you to have the shoe a lot looser. So maybe if you're just chilling at home or if you're running or walking in this particular pair long distance and you wanna tighten them up a little bit, you can just hit that with a click of the button. But that still is not where it ends. They've obviously incorporated Siri into this, so you would be able to go like, hey Siri, tighten my shoes, and it would be like, that kind of vibe. So that's a really, really awesome feature to have. And then there's some other little gimmicky things. You'll notice when I press the buttons over here, they do light up. So they're currently defaulted to light up green, but there are 13 other color options that you can do to change the LED color inside of those buttons. Uh, so you can change up the look of the shoe, at least at night, uh, where it's gonna be most effective on foot. But onto the details of the shoe, the outsole over here is a transparent charcoal coloring. You do have a red Nike swoosh, which has been put just below that. It's quite a nice rubbery outsole on this particular pair. I do like the design of it. It's kind of ripply all the way through. And that basically rolls up into the midsole of the shoe, which is quite a soft material here. I'm not actually sure what that is 100%. I don't think it is React. Uh, I think it's just standard kind of polyurethane, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then obviously the two buttons I've spoken about. And then you've got these sort of TPU plastic design pieces, which house the lacing and mechanisms of these power lasers to basically go up and down as per the motor in the shoe. Swinging around to the heel section, you do have Nike branding. This is also a sort of a rubberized material over here, just with the Nike logo there. The heel collar section over here is very well padded, so you're getting a lot of padding on the ankle of the shoe. Uh, into the medial side of the shoe, again, you've just got these structured pieces over here, which are housing the mechanism of the lacing system. And then into the upper of the shoe, this just looks like a standard sort of fly knit to me. Uh, and then you've got a hell of a lot of this 3M overlay here, so adding a lot of visibility and reflection on foot under certain lighting conditions. And then moving further up the shoe to this tongue section, which is kind of like a little bit of a pull tab over here, uh, you do have some Hirachi brand and then in the middle of that there's this transparent piece of plastic which has got some kind of honeycomb design on it and it also has that sort of iridescent look uh, depending on which kind of light and way that you're looking at the shoe so adding quite a cool feature to the top of the shoe itself and just to show you the insoles over here these are done in a blue and black colorway with orange branding of adapt and the nike swoosh the pattern just behind that kind of lines up if you guys will be able to see that with the patterning on the outsole. It's kind of like a thumbprint of some sort, but ties up very nicely with the outsole as mentioned. Now it's gonna be quite difficult to show you, but I'll try catch it with the B-roll. The motor and the engine essentially for this particular shoe is housed in the midsole. And then if you pull hmm, these Velcro straps out, and I'll try and get in there with the camera, you'll be able to see it right into that engine bay, if I can call it that. Uh, and I'm not really sure why that's kind of kept open or just at least with velcro flaps on it but i'm assuming uh if they needed to replace a part or something like that or maybe it's the installation of it in the shoe that's how they would need to get there but it's something that you don't really feel on foot uh, at least as far as i know from people who have the shoe uh, and obviously with the insole over that uh, they are pretty comfortable on foot as far as i've been told now this particular colorway which is the black white and 3m uh, released alongside a yellow colorway which looks like that so those were the two launch colorways that came up with the shoe i have seen one other colorway so far which looks like that which i think looks really really awesome as well and i really hope that we get these out here in south africa at some stage or another once again just a shout out to my mate brendan for sending these through to us because they are incredibly rare to see here in south africa you just can't find these anywhere like they're a mission to bring in i don't even know if you can like ship them normally uh he had to particularly mule this pair i think it went from the uk uh to a pub in the uk and from a pub in the uk to frankfurt and from frankfurt to i don't even know and then flown back here to cape town so these have been on quite a journey to get here so thanks very much for making that happen and for letting us have a look at them from a sizing perspective as i've come to understand these are absolutely true to size uh, if you do have a wide foot, you might want to consider taking a half size up if you can find the half size up in these. I'm not even sure if they made them in half sizes, but true to size is apparently the way to go on these. From a price perspective, they did release for $350 or 350 euros. Uh, and as far as I understand, 350 pounds as well in the UK for the EU version. But that's pretty much it for these Hirachi adapts. I hope you guys have enjoyed taking a quick look around here with me on Sneaker Stories. If you do have any further questions on this particular pair, please drop them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I will definitely catch you back here with another review soon. Please don't forget to do me the favor and subscribe. But until then, keep well and I'll catch you on the next one.